Nobody likes inconsistency, especially when it comes to YouTube. I mean, look at the condition of this channel. I've been at it for a year and it's a disaster. And the fault lies with me, don't get me wrong. I know I have not been consistent. Just when I get the schedule right and start pumping videos on a regular basis, some random shit happens in my life that fucks up the entire thing that I'm trying to work on and build and I fucking hate it. Anyway, how was your day? Good? Awesome. I'm sorry about that little rant there. Actually, you guys are the only ones that I can vent this to, so thank you for this free therapy session. You guys are legit awesome. Smash like. No, really, you guys are amazing. Subscribe. Episode 9 of Tower of God just came out and I made this video. Look, I had decided to milk this anime to the fullest because it's trending and all, but I skipped quite a few episode reviews, but... Whatever. Starting today, I shall milk it to death. And I hope to keep a steady and consistent upload schedule Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday every week so you know what to do. Now let the milking begin. Now this episode was legit good. Betrayals. Betrayals everywhere, people. No doubt this was a character-driven episode and boy, a lot of characters took center stage in the short amount of time that was this episode. So where do we start? Uh, let's just go with Endorsey. A little backstory. She apparently was adopted by a noble family that forced her to compete against her adopted sisters until she up and killed all of them for warm food. <laughs> That's fucked up. And what's more fucked up are the noble families that adopt little girls and put them through hell all for the sake of having a princess of jihad in the family. This really gives you some idea about the importance of the tower in this world. A world that, mind you, we haven't seen much of. And it's about goddamn time that we do. Smash like if you agree. Also Ho, being the uh, weak ass Ho that he is, excuse the well thought out joke, does the shittiest job of killing someone. I mean, if you want to do something, just fucking do it. Don't just stand there talking about it, man. But you know, can't really blame the guy because we find out later he was really confused and conflicted. Backstory! Well, it turns out that all of his people, or at least those that were close to him, all of which appeared to be lollies for some reason, were wiped out by a monstrous creature and he was too powerless to do anything about it. Maybe that monster was just a metaphor for some powerful enemy. We don't know that yet. Anyway, he yeets himself. Big sad. No, for reals. No joke. Subscribe if you think it's sad. Ho is someone who got played and left behind. So what's the lesson here? He lost because he was weak? Well, no. He lost because he was a fucking idiot. He got played because he put too much trust on an unknown person. Because he wanted to climb not by getting good but by eliminating stronger competitors. He bit off more than he could chew and that very act exposed him for who he really is. A weak player faking his strength. He couldn't bear it and took his own life. Pretty sad when you look at it this way. All right, enough doom and gloom, people. Let's talk about my boy Bomb, because God damn, you got strong, boy. You got badass. Don't get me wrong, you're still the same, but damn, you got some balls, boy. Learning a ranker level move after seeing it once and using it on that ranker, boy, you be OP. Also nice to finally see some progression on the Rachel side of things. And speaking of Rachel, what's the deal with that scary looking dude? When Rachel got stabbed, fam, he just up and disappeared. Oh yeah, Rachel got stabbed. NOBODY CARES! Without a doubt, the best thing in this episode was Kun being a total boss. I mean, there's strategy and then there's anime strategy. And on top of that, there's you gotta be kidding me strategy. And at the very top is Light Yagami. Kun lies somewhere between you gotta be kidding me and Light Yagami. But in all seriousness, his strategy had so many different layers and was so well executed that it didn't come off as unrealistic or forced. I've said it before, Kun is Awesome. The animation is still 
okay at best. The story is one thing, but give me something materialistic and superficial. Yes, I'll admit it, I'm shallow. So please, give me some good animation sequences. Also, like I said, show us some more of the goddamn world, man. Nothing much, just some random places in the world like a market or a school or maybe even some houses. Oh, I know, how about the goddamn tower itself? What we've seen so far is only the inside of the tower. It makes me feel like I'm trapped inside a building with no idea as to what kind of building it is or even where it is. Give us something, man, come on. All right, what else is there? Yeah, Quan. Turns out he's quite a cinnamon roll. Didn't really expect that. Also, Kun is awesome. Did I mention that? That Kun is awesome? Yeah. Yeah, Kun is awesome. Anak is still best lizard. Rock is still best Sundare. And the episode managed to cram in a few cutesy moments from these two. Between all the gloom and death and fighting and excitement. My heart can only take so much. Anyway, looking forward to the next episode, hoping for some Rachel Bomb closure. Also need more Kawaii Anak. There is simply not enough Kawaii Anak people, and that is not fair. Smash like if you agree. Let me know what you awesome peeps think about this episode. Was it good? Was it bad? Put it down in the comments section. Subscribe for more videos every week. Well, almost every week. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.